This isn't the first time we've had this conversation, is it? Well, it's over. Jonathan Majors is out as the next big bad of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. As Disney slash Marvel Studios reacts to the news of his conviction by immediately parting ways with the King actor once news of that conviction became public. It's because of this and many, many other reasons that now is finally the time for Marvel to cut Kang the Conqueror and move on. Real quick, let's recap the basic facts available to us. On December 18th, Marvel Studios cut ties with actor Jonathan Majors following a New York jury finding him guilty on one count of harassment and another count of third degree reckless assault. A jury found Majors not guilty of one count of intentional assault in the third degree and one count of aggravated harassment in the second degree. He faces sentencing of up to one year in prison. And like we said in the intro, Disney slash Marvel Studios has confirmed to IGN that the company has parted ways with the Kang actor following months of speculation around his domestic violence charges. We could talk more about Majors, the man, the actor, the downfall, but that's not really what this piece is about. The real subject is Kang, the central villain role that ostensibly anchors the multiverse saga played by him. Will Marvel Studios recast Kang? Is there still a Kang dynasty? Will the MCU fall apart? I'm here to tell you, Marvel absolutely doesn't need Kang and it can, nay should, move on from the character entirely. This isn't a think piece about Jonathan Majors. He's just that immaterial to the argument. I can make the case that it's time to dump Kang relying solely on completely valid in-world reasons. The character of Kang as a tentpole Marvel villain just hasn't been working as a driver to action and has overall been a weak presence that has ultimately contributed to the poor reception of Marvel Phase 5 overall. So again, just to be clear, for purposes of this specific argument, this is a lore thing. This isn't a majors thing. The character of Kang has been dumpable and Marvel should not continue the Kang road with a new actor. As much as I like John Boyega, an actor many have jokingly said should get an audition, and I do think he deserves to be cast in more big leading roles, just don't even recast this part. But the outcome to this equation remains it remains the same the mcu has outgrown king it doesn't need him it hasn't needed him in a while don't recast him just dump the character there isn't a good reason for us to slog our way to avengers the king dynasty before we can enjoy the other very promising exciting prospects in marvel's future it isn't really even Kang's fault that this era of Marvel has been ill-defined and unfocused. After all, it's important for movies to not merely exist as cogs of a larger cinematic universe, but that they're able to stand on their own. However, a supporting thread hearkening to a big upcoming threat that all the heroes need to work against has been an extremely interesting and successful idea for Marvel in particular. On top of that, a looming threat is a great device for putting teams together and ultimately creating bonds and pairings that make the cinematic world richer on top of being incredibly fun to watch. What we need is an excuse for strong-willed, ultra-powered personalities to converge, and an enormous threat is the best way to do that. What, did you think Iron Man and Doctor Strange hung out because they liked each other's company? Douchebag. That Carol Danvers came back to Earth because she figured adult Monica Rambo really wanted to see her? Ouch. Sorry, Monica. Powerful heroes with powerful opinions and personalities sometimes need some help to unite to be their best selves. A villain's work is truly never done. In a time when Doctor Doom, Magneto, and reportedly even Galactus loom in the distance, it's time to cut losses and move on. Sunk cost be damned, we just want Marvel Cinematic Projects to make us feel things. And a dead guy, another dead guy, Victor Timely, and this one scene sure aren't inspiring it. Member Thanos? Now he was a villain. He struck fear in our hearts, even though for years he only popped in for a scene, if that, in our favorite Marvel stories, slowly revealing what would be a strong connective thread uniting not just a great superhero team, but millions and millions of fans across the world in theaters where we felt 
despair, hope, loss, and ultimately the taste of triumph for the good of all. Thanos was the threat that actually stopped us cold. Thanos was the villain we all considered to be an incredible problem. And with only the power of every single hero in over 20 movies uniting as one force for good, could he ever hope to be defeated? The first and only time Kang appeared in a movie, he was defeated by Ant-Man. Okay, okay, I, that's not fair and I know it. The Wasp was part of the victory too. There you go, see? Fair's fair. MCU phases one through three and the current state of the Marvel Cinematic Universe hardly seem apt to compare. While Thanos appeared intermittently and demonstrated he was to be feared every single time, Quantumania Kang was killed pretty easily by his own multiversal core. Granted, there are many, many Kang variants out there, but the representative one we'd been following for an entire movie, who posed a threat to the quantum realm, and who Janet Van Dyne spent much of her life in fear of, died in the very movie he was introduced in. The visual of the model Kang kicking the bucket right away does not necessarily spell, we have to unite the multiverse's mightiest heroes together. If just Ant-Man and the Wasp can cause his death on their own. Do you remember how hard the heroes worked to get a single scratch on Thanos? All that for a drop of blood. That communicated to us, the audience, that this would be a once in a lifetime challenge that everyone could put all their power into opposing and still possibly lose. An introduction and death in one movie shows the audience that the king problem is a totally solvable problem. And that just isn't interesting enough to keep following for the years it could possibly take to see the story through. There has already been a significant investment in Kang as a major Marvel villain with major appearances in both seasons of Loki and Quantumania and promises to come of Avengers, the Kang Dynasty. While Loki has proven to be a major achievement of two incredibly different yet poignant seasons forming two halves of a complete story, Quantumania was not Marvel's best and actually perhaps its worst. Let's just make this argument factual and state that Quantumania was not received well by critics nor fans with the lowest Metacritic and Rotten Tomato score of any MCU movie. This is actually impressive given that Eternals exists. Some of the criticism against Quantumania was that it gave the impression that it was overstuffed yet not fully developed. A mere shadow reminding of Marvel's greater action movies but without doing the work to really earn it. In short, generally audiences felt they were being told to eat and like what they were being served up, even if it didn't taste very good. Oh. Ugh. The rest of MCU phase five and beyond does not need to be hampered down by following the path laid out by its worst movie. After a long precedent of massive financial and critical success, Marvel is in a different time now, filled with think pieces about how to save the MCU and the whiplash of reactions of the MCU is dead after one project followed by the MCU is back after the next project and then back to the MCU being dead again. What they really need is a hit. Something that will thrill fans and remind people why they love these stories and characters. I don't know for sure what that project is, but I'm willing to bet money it's more likely along the lines of Fantastic Four and X-Men and not following a path laid down by Quantumania. Quantumania was by and large criticized for its VFX quality, lack of clear arcs, difference between what was shown to be the story in the trailer versus what it actually was, disjointedness, and lack of real consequences. I'm going to point out another major flaw on the subject of Kang specifically besides Quantumania proving him highly defeatable. The stated consequence is the same every time he pops up and it's tiresome. If Kang gets out of the quantum realm, entire timelines will die. If we kill he who remains, entire timelines will die. If we don't fix the temporal loom, entire timelines, guess what, will die. Loki season two really landed its finale in episodes five and six, but for a while there earlier on in the season, one Mimasaku's talent was effectively wasted on her character being relegated to staring at a screen and outright stating that the timelines will die and that means lots of people will die, which is sad and should have made us feel sad. 
The stakes tied to Kang and the multiverse have been used many times over, but maybe even more importantly, were effectively solved by Loki's decision to become the best character in the MCU. It would be so poetic to just let it lie there, at least for the time being, and not just immediately knock that heroic sacrifice down. Let Loki have his moment of glorious purpose. A good way to use Kang without making him the tentpole villain is to simply demote him. He could be relegated to off-camera activities, sure. He could also be totally absorbed by the arrival of another massive threat villain so powerful that they could not only absorb Kang's multiversal threat, but go even beyond. There is a world where Kang is the herald for someone else, say Galactus, even Doctor Doom or Magneto, I can totally see how writers could make that script work. I love comics a great deal, but to call Kang an A-lister like these Marvel villains would be a stretch. If we absolutely, positively must finish out Kang's story on screen, there is a possibility of relegating him to a series as opposed to the tentpole Marvel villain. Like Agatha Harkness and Arthur Harrow before him, Kang can be reassigned to a smaller stakes series villain function. Honestly, Loki season two already primed that pathway for him, so it wouldn't be all that big a shift. With a Young Avengers project teased, there is actually an ideal spot for him to be finished off by them there with an Iron Lad storyline just waiting to be explored. But this is only if someone at Marvel named Kevin Feige just really, really needs closure on the character. I think it's very possible to blot out the Kang threat with a bigger villain. I mentioned earlier that this argument would not revolve around Jonathan Majors, and it still won't. While the actor is newly fired from Marvel, it really does seem like the studio may have been planning for this outcome for some time and could have been pulling up stakes on the entire Kang plan. Several reports going back to November 2023, a month before Majors' criminal conviction, sourced writer and Marvel expert Joanna Robinson, co-author of MCU, The Reign of Marvel Studios, quoting her as saying, Marvel was dropping screenwriter Jeff Loveness from writing duties on Avengers The Kang Dynasty. Director Destin Daniel Cretton, who was attached to The Kang Dynasty since last year, has also left the project, according to The Hollywood Reporter. If true, these factors contribute to the idea that Marvel has been shifting away from Kang for some time, despite few official announcements on that subject. I hope this is the case. I believe in the potential of Marvel's characters and stories that haven't yet been told on screen. And we don't get there if the MCU doesn't pivot its course. Kang's but, gone. You, know, you did it. Metaphorically. Don't have to worry about that guy anymore. Thanks for watching. I'm Kim Horcher, and for more Marvel, here's why the real problem was Avengers Endgame. What could we possibly mean by that? Check out the video for yourself, and don't forget to follow and subscribe to IGN wherever you like to watch.